Well, a very good morning to you this morning. This is St James and St Anne's online service coming to you from Bermondsey this morning. And our first song that we're going to join together in singing is How Great Is Our God. Let's sing. The earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God! Sing with me how. Our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Age to age He stands, and time is in His hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. to a time of confession right at the very beginning of our service. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sins and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we can bring him our thanks and praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. 
Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And our next song this morning is going to be Knowing You. Now we come to our Bible reading, which is from Ephesians chapter 6. And then Jacob is going to preach to us this morning.
This week, our country marked the 75th anniversary of VJ Day, uh, commemorating the surrender of the Japanese forces towards the end of the Second World War. And sadly, we know all too well why they surrendered. On the July the 26th, 1945, President Truman issued the Potsdam Declaration, and he told Japan to, quote, surrender or suffer prompt and utter destruction. But Japan didn't surrender. They tragically underestimated the power of the United States of America. Eleven days later, the first atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, and three days after that, another was dropped on Nagasaki. Between them, both bombs instantly killed over a hundred thousand people. Such a weapon completely overpowered all armour and defences and devastated Japan. Suddenly the decision to surrender was an easy one to make. The nuclear bomb is a power far beyond our ability to defend. It must not be underestimated. Such weapons could destroy the world, and yet in day-to-day -day life, it's so easy to forget that such bombs even exist. Now I say all this because Christians also have an unbelievably powerful enemy. One we routinely underestimate, an enemy we easily forget about as we go about our day-to-day -day lives. But this enemy is well able to overpower us and overpower any defence we try to make in our own strength. And yet this is an enemy we must never surrender to. Instead we must continually take our stand against him. This enemy is of course the devil, together with all the demonic forces at his disposal. Now the devil is for some people uh, almost a laughable concept, uh, like some sort of medieval fairy tale character, hardly something to take seriously. I think I often feel like that. The devil just sounds fictional. But the devil was well known to Jesus and the apostles were all familiar with demonic power. If we laugh at the idea of the devil, well inevitably we will be caught off guard and woefully under-equipped. And so Paul writes to the Ephesians with the encouragement they need to ensure that, as he says in verse 11, they will be able to resist the enemy's attacks so that after fighting to the end, they will still hold their ground. Now, no Christian would be wise to ignore his words. In a moment, we'll think about the armour and weapons Paul tells us to put on. But first, let's take a closer look at our enemy. Paul tells us that our enemy is the devil who is always playing evil tricks, it says. Now that description sounds just a bit like Dennis the Menace, but the devil's tricks are his evil strategies designed to destroy your faith and tear down our church. Paul has been explaining in this letter how through Jesus people are being saved, divided peoples are being united, and sin is being overcome with godliness and harmony. The devil's intention is to undermine our faith in Jesus and reintroduce into our lives and church all that division and sin. And he is not weak. It's not like a fight against human beings, says Paul. This isn't a punch-up. This isn't even trying to resist a dictator and all his armies. Verse 12 says, We are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against the wicked spiritual forces in the heavenly world, the rulers, authorities, and cosmic powers of this dark age. The heavenly world is the unseen spiritual world that exists all around us. It's populated by wicked forces, all with different ranks, all the way up to the level of what Paul calls cosmic powers. That is world level power. Elsewhere, the devil is called the god of this world and the ruler of this age. His evil power has global reach and control. He is no small fry. He is unconquerable by any man or woman or child. And if you are a Christian, then he knows about you. You are under threat because he wants you to fall. 
It's scary to realise that you cannot defeat him, but the good news is that God can. A line in a famous song by the German theologian Martin Luther reminds us that in the end, one little word from God will slay the devil for good. But until then, we're in a battle. And if we are to stand, we need not human defences, but armour and weapons manufactured in heaven. We need God's armour. Paul says in verse 10, Build up your strength in union with the Lord and by means of his mighty power. Put on all the armour that God gives you so that you will be able to stand up against the devil's evil tricks. And then in verse 13, he says, So put on God's armour now. Then when the evil day comes, you will be able to resist the enemy's attacks. And after fighting to the end, you'll still hold your ground. The need for this armour is urgent. But as a Christian, this armour isn't something you sort of automatically just find yourself wearing. No, Paul keeps saying, put it on, put it on. So let's hear what it is so that we can wear it and keep it strapped on tight. There's six pieces of armour listed here. A belt, a breastplate, shoes, a shield, a helmet and a sword. And these represent truth, righteousness, announcing the good news, faith, salvation and the word of God. Firstly then, uh, tighten the belt of truth around your waist. Truth in the Bible is something we can know and something we must do. Act truthfully in accordance with the truth about God that we know. Uh, Jesus called the devil the father of lies. So he lied to Eve and because she believed the lie, she acted sinfully. So the first piece of armour, know the truth well enough that lies won't deceive you. Make sure your knowledge and behaviour matches up with what the Bible tells us. Secondly, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness often describes that status that we have with God. You know, through faith in Jesus, God counts us as righteous, even though we are sinners. The devil wants you to believe that your sins mean God cannot love you. If you think that, then every time you sin, you'll feel that bit more distant from God. That bit more like God's only ever disappointed with you. And that will destroy your faith. So wear the breastplate of righteousness. Have it right across your heart so that you never forget that thanks to Jesus, no matter what you do and how often you sin and mess things up, no matter how guilty you feel, in God's eyes, you're a saint, not a sinner. And he won't change his mind. Thirdly, be ready to announce the good news of peace. If there was no good news, no gospel, well then of course the devil would have won. We'd all be on his side. But every time someone believes the good news, they defect from the darkness and join with us in the light. The gospel banishes the darkness. Always have it on your lips. Fourthly, take up the shield of faith. A Roman soldier carried a huge fire-resistant shield to protect him from flaming arrows dipped in tar. When the devil assaults us with his flaming arrows, our shield is faith. Faith is what we're doing when we come to God for refuge and help, when we listen to and believe his promises. Faith is trusting God. When you feel tempted or when you doubt, call out to God, remember his promises, take refuge in him. Fifthly, wear the helmet of salvation. This is the knowledge of our victory in Christ. It's a helmet of hope. When the devil attacks you, keep your head, knowing in the end, Jesus wins and we belong to Jesus. And sixthly, use your sword, which is the word of God empowered by the Holy Spirit. This is the only weapon that Paul lists. Uh, think of Jesus in the wilderness being tempted by the devil. Every temptation was sliced to bits with a quotation from the Bible. Sometimes just knowing one verse of truth that speaks into a situation or a problem we are facing can direct us away from evil and keep us standing firm for Jesus. Well, this is the armour we must wear. 
maybe later in the week, replay this sermon and remind yourself of what we've learned because we must always have this armour on. We need to know what it is. But what is the way to put it all on? I mean, it's no good just reading this passage, listening to this sermon. What is the spiritual practice that actually equates to putting the armour on? Well, Paul says it's prayer. To stand your ground, you've got to kneel. Verse 18 says, do all this in prayer, asking for God's help. Keep the lines of communication between you and God always open. Paul uses the word all four times. Do this, uh, all this in prayer. Pray on every occasion. Pray always for all God's people. Prayer is the attitude of a Christian in full armour. Uh, we must always pray. Every occasion needs prayer. Keep on praying, and not just for yourself, but for all God's people. It's easy to pray sometimes, on some occasions, for some people. But let's work towards deepening our prayer lives. Pray at home as well as at church. Pray in the morning as well as before bed. Pray with friends as well as alone. Pray quick prayers in your head if you're in a tough situation, as well as longer prayers at home when you've got peace and quiet. Pray always. So there we have it. We've come to the end of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I haven't quite got to the very end, uh, sadly. We're out of time. Uh, but let's summarise what we've been hearing this morning. The devil is terrifyingly powerful. But with God's armour and in God's strength, we cannot be overcome. You know, if someone were to draw your spiritual portrait, make it your aim, this week and always, to be found in full armour and on your knees. Well, let's pray together now. Heavenly Father, thank you for teaching us about this armour, teaching us about our enemy and reminding us to pray. Help us to put this armour on daily and so to stand against the devil and all his attacks on us and all his powers to stand so that in the end we may win the victory with our Saviour Jesus Christ. Thank you that we can be sure that he will win. We pray this and praise you in his name. Amen.
really good to know that we have a God who hears us when we come to him in prayer. And we're going to do that now. Let's pray together. Let us pray. Lord of all creation, we pray to you for our world. We think of all the places where people are suffering and struggling uh, because of coronavirus or all sorts of other afflictions. We think of countries unable to afford uh, the health care that we have in this country, uh, where people who suffer, suffer worse uh, because of that. We pray that you would be their comfort and their strength. We think of uh, the people of Lebanon, especially those living in Beirut, uh, the thousands who are injured, uh, some perhaps who are still to die from their injuries. Please provide comfort and support to those uh, people through aid agencies, uh, through local residents helping and chipping in, uh, through churches uh, providing care. We pray that your love would be seen in the way your people treat those who are suffering. We also pray particularly for Christians suffering the assaults of the devil uh, in Nigeria and China and elsewhere where Christians are severely persecuted. Please guard the faith of those whose churches are being burnt down or demolished, uh, whose pastors and ministers are being kidnapped and locked up, whose congregation members are being dragged out of church and beaten. Please give them resilience and strength. Remind them to put on the helmet of salvation, the hope of the knowledge that in the end Jesus will win. Please strengthen them with that knowledge and we pray that you would work to bring about peace in those nations so that Christians can live their lives without fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Heavenly Father, for our own country. We pray for the government to continue to have wisdom in managing the lockdown and the easing of lockdown. Especially we pray for those struggling with uh, flare-ups in their mental health issues or health conditions, uh, struggling because they've been able, unable to get the help they need. Please would you provide for them. Uh, we pray that uh, as uh, hospitals get all their capacity back, as, as it becomes a little bit easier to get to the doctors and that sort of thing, especially for those shielding, uh, that any a treatment that is needed, any care that is needed that hasn't yet been provided, that people would get to the doctors and be able to get the help they need. Pray for members of our own congregation uh, that you would provide them uh, with the health care that they need. As well as our government, Heavenly Father, we pray for all the students who have been disappointed by their recent A-level results. Um, pray particularly for those uh, in our area whose results were downgraded uh, out of the blue and unexpectedly and who have lost out on university places or who feel that it's going to be a permanent blot on their record for employment. Please would you help um, Ofqual and the other agencies responsible for sorting out these grades and to get it right. Um, we pray that in the end everything would be fair and especially we pray that it wouldn't be those in poorer areas who suffer the most. Thank you for all the hard work teachers have put in to teach students, the hard work students have put in to try and work towards good grades, even in the difficult conditions of lockdown. Uh, it was already very hard. As we pray for those who are feeling bitterly disappointed, that you would comfort them and provide a way forward. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for our church, Heavenly Father. Please help us to put on the full armour of God and to pray. For those who've struggled to pray during lockdown, who felt far from you, please draw them close. Please put in their hand the shield of faith so that they may extinguish all the flaming arrows of the devil. Please keep us all going, keep us standing, so that when we finally all get back to church, we're all there and accounted for, and no one has fallen away. Please protect us from the devil's evil tricks. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that we've been able to enjoy some uh, services back in church during the week, uh, that a few of us have been able to share communion together. But we long for the day when we all gather together and eat from your table as one church. And so please help us to be patient, help us to get all the things in place that are needed, so that when we get back to church uh, in a few weeks' time, 
um, as many as possible would be able to come, be protected from any risk, uh, and that we would all uh, be able to enjoy one another's company. And we pray that as soon as possible we would be able to enjoy church the way it was before, complete with singing uh, and conversation and tea and coffee and all the things that we enjoy. And when we come back, we pray that many who have seen our Bermondsey Daily Messages or been joining in with these services online would be able to come and meet us face to face for the first time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And our final hymn, To God be the glory, great things he has done. A great rousing hymn to complete our service with this morning. Let's sing. final prayer as we finish our service this morning. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen.
Well, I do thank you for joining us this morning for our online service. Do tune into the Bermondsey Daily Messages each and every day this week. You can find them online. The details of where will be coming up on the screen at the end of the service. Whatever it is you're doing this week, have a great week and go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen.